If you're looking for how to implement debounce with Angular signals, you're actually at the right place. If you don't know already, Angular does not provide a way of using debounce or throttle out of the box when it comes to the signals API. But since we already have worked with RxJS for so long, at least I've been working for about eight years or so, we can actually implement our own quick util to actually implement debounce with signals with ease. So I'm going to show you what this really means. When we talk about debounce, we mean that we have to send the API call not on every single key press, which means if I press MILK, it should actually send just one call instead of four calls. But right now, if you go to this stack bits and you can find the link in the description of this video, but if you go here and go to console by default, you're going to see that here, if I type MILK, you could see four different event executions, which means that this is going to hypothetically send four API calls. Right now in the code, I'm just faking that. So it's just going to the Angular service and fetching data. But if this was a network call, you can imagine how many calls users would be sending to your server. That's not really good. So what do we do? Let's have a look at the code first. So in here, you'll see that this is the input that we rendered right here. And you can see that we are binding this via the ng model to search query, which is a signal. So if I come here, you can see this is the signal. Whenever the value of this signal changes, this effect gets triggered because we are using the signal in the effect here and here. So as soon as the value changes, we log this on console and we also call this function called search items using the latest value of the signal. So if I type mi, it's going to take mi and then it's going to call this function, which essentially would then update the list items to only show what I've searched. Well, with that said, how do we go about this? The first thing that we need to do is to create a debound signal. And I want to keep the name search query for the debound signals. So what I'm going to do here is just going to comment that this is going to be search query equals something like debounced signal. And for now, I'm going to actually replace this search query with something like search input val just for the sake of naming things correctly. So I'm going to copy this and replace this, this, and actually this right here as well. I'm going to save this and we'll double check that this works exactly the same. And if I type MILK, you can see that this works exactly the same. Now let's start implementing this debound signal. For this, we're going to go and create a new file here inside the app. So I'm going to say new file. I'm going to call it utils or you can call this signal utils. It's really up to you. So when we are in the file, we are going to say export function. We are going to create a new function. We're going to call this debounced signal just like this. And then we are going to give a type here as well called T. Now we are going to pass a couple of things here. First of all, we are going to pass the signal here because we want to debounce a signal. We need the signal which we need to debounce. And this is going to be of type signal. And you are going to import this from Angular core. And you will say that this is going to be of type of signal of type T. Let's say we have this particular signal, which is a string signal. That means that this T is going to be string. And that also means that this T is also going to be string. The second thing that we need to pass here is what is the debounce delay or what is the timer here? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a new parameter here. I'm going to say debounce delay. And here this is going to be a number. Now that we have this, we can essentially see how we can return a signal that is debounced. So the first thing that we need to do is we are going to convert this signal that we are going to pass, which is going to be this one. We are going to convert that into an observable. So here I'm going to say const signal observable. And here I'm going to say equals. And then I'm going to say two observable. Now this two observable essentially comes from the RxJS interop. So you need to import that. So here you can say import and here you can say from at angular slash code slash RxJS interop. And in here you're going to basically import two things, two observable and then two signal, both of them, because we are going to need two signal as well. Now when we do two observable, we need to pass this signal here. So we are going to go here and we are going to say signal. Then in the next line, we are going to return back a signal. So here we are going to say return and here we are going to say to signal and now we can do some magic. So this is what we are doing. We're taking the original signal, we're converting it into an observable, and then we return back the debounced signal using the two signal value. So here you can say returning debounced signal. Now, how do we debounce the signal using the nice little RxJS? So here we are going to say the signal observable that we have here, right here, we are going to pipe it. We're going to use the pipe operator. And inside here, we are going to use the good old debounce time operator from RxJS. So here you can say import from and here you can say rxjs and here you can import debounce time just like this. Now we are using debounce time here. This requires us to pass a due time or a number which we call debounce delay here. So we pass this debounce delay to the debounce time and there we go folks. We have a debounced signal. So what we do is we take the signal, convert that into an observable. Then we pipe on that particular observable using debounce time and the resultant of it we send back as a signal which essentially becomes our debounce signal. Great. So now I can actually save this file and I can go into my code and I can uncomment my in my component this thing and I can import the debounce signal just
just like this. Now I need to pass both the things. I need to pass the original signal, which is search input val. So I'm going to say this dot search input val just like this. And then I need to pass the debounce time. I'm going to pass 500 milliseconds as the debounce time. You can see that there are no errors, which means that we are good to go. But now that we have this search query right here, I want to use this search query instead of the search input val. Remember, whenever we change an input, for example, MILK, you can see that it quickly updates the UI and triggers all those calls. We don't want to do that on every key press or every change of the search input val. We want to do this when the search query changes, which means that when the debounce happens, then we want to run this effect and then we want to also call the search items. So instead of the search input value, we are going to call the search query just like this and search query just like this. Now you'll see something interesting here. By default, the search query here says that the argument of type string or undefined is not assignable to parameter of type string, which means that our debounced signal actually returns either a signal of a string or undefined. Where did this undefined come from? By default, the signal actually has an empty string value. Well, the observable doesn't really know that. So in order to fix this, there are several ways that you can do it. But the correct and the recommended way is that when we are creating a debounce signal, just like we provide a default value for this signal, we provide a default value here as well as empty string. Now our function doesn't really support that. So we're going to go inside here and we are going to create another parameter inside our function. You can see that we have two arguments here. We are going to create another argument here and I'm hoping that this is going to format it nicely. So here we're going to call this initial value, which always have to be provided and it's going to be of type T essentially. So if it's a signal of a string, then the initial value is going to be also of type string and the return debound signal also is going to be of type string. Now that we have this, we can essentially pass this initial value here as the second argument of two signal. So this two signal has two arguments now first one is this one and then we say comma and then we pass the initial value just like this but not like this actually we're going to say initial value and we're going to provide it so this is essentially the short form of doing this that the initial value for this two signal is actually the initial value that we have here so we're just going to use the short form here now that we have this we can actually see our code and now that we pass this uh, string here this should actually solve the problem so let's see if i try to do this you can see that now the typescript doesn't really complain so if I save it now and if I go and open my console, you're going to notice that when I say MILK, it stops, does the debounce, and then we actually get just one single call. That's what we wanted. Now I can remove this and you can see that it waits for a while. I could also say milk. I could change my mind and say bread. And you can see that the only query that goes is of bread. So unless the user really stops, it's going to do the debounce. And there we go. You will find the link of the code of the starting point and the final code as well in the description of this video. And this is one of the use cases where we can extend extend the capabilities of signals and observables and use the RxJS interop to create really complex scenarios as well that still work with the signal APIs. One of the other things that people also ask quite a lot is a version of signals where you have retry calls as well. Let me know if that's something that you're interested in and let me know if you liked this video. If you did, press the thumbs up button, share in the comment how do you feel about this video and as always, happy coding. I'm going to see you next time.